Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous, but a little too windy to do this outside today, here in the former paradise of South Austin under the Chemtrail Street skies. We're going to be talking about chemtrails in this roundup here on this gorgeous Wednesday now afternoon, November 22nd, 2017. I've been spending all day. I'm such a world famous doom and gloomer now. I've finally got some time for myself and my little dog to bring you this week's Climate Change Meltdown Roundup Rant where I go on the pages of the mainstream media science pages to bring you more evidence of how this planet is heading directly into a burning lake of fire. There's one problem. You will not find the words climate change or global warming anywhere on the mainstream media today. It does not exist, at least in my, in my search. You will not find the, uh, either one of those terms, probably because they've been eclipsed by the terms Black Friday, taking up half of the uh, total headlines on the planet today. But fortunately, we got some of that uh, alternative media, and I have put some in the queue that I found earlier. I don't have that many stories, but I got some good ones. I am thrilled to announce we have the brand new, sorry Andy, the brand new bullshit detector button. And the newest character on Humpty Dumpty Tribe, Sherlock the polar bear. Oh shit, Sherlock. All right. So we are off and running with a new character. The Sancho Panza does not know what to make of Sherlock. Doesn't know what to make of Sherlock. You're sniffing Sherlock's butt. Look, look at you. I put you on there and what do you do? You put your nose right up Sherlock's butt first thing. Anyway, let's go over to Grist Magazine. Grist Magazine from the alternative side of the dial where we see their cover story gets right into it. Ice Apocalypse. Ice Apocalypse and their lead story is talking about how the rapid collapse of Antarctic glaciers could flood coastal cities by the end of this century. We're going to let the No Shit Sherlock Bear press the bullshit detector button. Yes, uh, this is a case right here. Of which button do you push? I push them both. Okay, this is by my. I mentioned this fellow before. I need to have an interview with this guy, Eric Holthaus, H O L T H A U S. A long involved piece by Eric. I can all, I could easily do a whole rant. Take it away, Eric. In a remote region of Antarctica known as the Pine Island Bay, 2,500 miles from the tip of South America, two glaciers hold human civilization hostage stretching across a frozen plain more than 150 miles long. These glaciers, named the Pine Island and the Thwaites Glaciers, have marched steadily for millennia towards the sea. And further inland, the, the glaciers widen into a two-mile thick reserve of ice covering an area the size of Texas. There is no doubt this ice will melt as the world warms. The vital question is when. The vital question is when. And then, so he spends the rest of this article looking at all of the various uh, climate projections, talking about it's no longer a matter of if. It's only a matter of when this fucker's coming down and what that will mean for the planet. Well, what it will mean just from, these, just from these two glaciers is a sea level rise of 11 feet. Sea level rise of 11 feet. And we're just talking the south end of the planet. And you add Greenland, you're looking at 20 
feet. And Greenland's going faster than, uh, than Antarctica. And uh, so he's particularly looking at some new research uh, claiming the, these, uh, these guys uh, in this newest research. Good Lord, this is a long, thick story uh, saying that it could happen this century that uh, as we look uh, as the worst case scenario worse than the worst case scenario so it's only the end of 2017 and we have climatologists beginning to go oops this could happen this century now of course there's probably plenty of other people who did not even make it uh, here saying it could happen a hell of a lot sooner than the end of this century. But the bottom line is, here, what would it look like uh, now, meaning, you know, they've always claimed that this is going to take thousands of years, but now as carbon dioxide traps more heat in the atmosphere and warms the planet, the scales have tipped. A wholesale collapse of Pine Island and Thwaites would set off a catastrophe Giant icebergs would stream away from Antarctica like a parade of frozen soldiers all over the world. High tides would creep higher, burying every shoreline on the planet, flooding coastal cities, and creating hundreds of millions of climate refugees. And all of this could play out in a mere... 20 to 50 years, much too quickly for humanity to adapt. Okay, so this is this new research out of the University of Massachusetts. A climatologist Rob DeCanto from University of Mass and David Pollard at Penn State University. Um, there you go, uh, quoting the headline in the peer-reviewed scientific journal Nature, uh, where this is all mapped out in that climatologist gobbledygook, quote, Antarctic model raises prospect of unstoppable ice collapse. There you go. The bottom line here, guys, nobody, nobody knows uh, how long it's going to take these, uh, this ice in Antarctica and Greenland to melt. Uh, <coughs> it's just that every single year we get more and more <coughs> of this. It is worse than we thought. Yep. Um... Uh, and of course, uh, what they're talking about, the new evidence says that once a certain temperature threshold is reached, ice shelves of glaciers that extend into the sea, like these two, will begin to melt from both above and below. This is all of this melting from below that more and more of these climatologists are going oops over. Uh, anyway, this is a long, involved story. Good Lord, Eric, you have done... Uh, so, let's see. Let's quote this guy, whoever, this climatologist, Bassus. I don't even know who Bassus is. Uh, Whoever his first name, Dr. Bassus, is an ice sheet scientist at the University of Michigan. And we will close this story with this, uh, with this quote from an ice sheet specialist. Every revision to our understanding has said every revision, revision meaning 
changing of one's mind. Every revision to our understanding has said that ice sheets can change faster than we thought. Hmm, where have we heard that before? Faster than we thought. We did not predict that Pine Island was going to retreat. We didn't predict that Larson B was going to disintegrate. We tend to look at these things after they have happened. After we tend to look at these things after they have happened. Z D D D. Now I was gonna go from those lefties over there at Grist. Uh, to those lefties over there at Democracy Now! talking to Kevin Anderson. But I'm going to get back to that one uh, story in a minute because this one uh, has grabbed my news. Grabbed my news. This news has grabbed my nose, I guess, from uh, whoever UCAR is. Anyway, uh, this is one of these papers from, uh, I don't have any idea who the hell UCA, okay, and NCAR. NCAR is the National Center for Atmospheric Research. Not sure who UCAR is, but they're a, uh, this is from the National Center for Atmospheric Research off of their website. <coughs> How many times, how many years have I been predicting this headline for anybody claiming that chemtrails will not be a reality in the next few years if they're not already? This is not from the Alex Jones channel. This is from NCAR. <clears throat> New approach to geoengineering simulation is significant step forward. Modeling strategy, this new modeling strategy allows scientists, these geoengineers, these wacky scientists, to explore ways to limit warming while reducing Side effects. Using a sophisticated computer model, scientists have demonstrated for the first time that a new research approach to geoengineering could potentially be used to limit Earth's warming to a specific target while reducing some of the risks and concerns identified in past studies, including uneven cooling of the globe. There you go. And I'm surprised it took this long for this, my favorite word from uh, the Apocaloptimist. The scientists developed a special algorithm, a specialized algorithm for the uh, for an Earth system model that varies the amount and location of geoengineering, in this case, injections of sulfur dioxide high into our atmosphere that would, in theory, be needed year to year to effectively cap warming. Yep, yep, yep. They caution, however, the scientists pushing this shit caution, however, that more research is needed to determine if this approach, spraying uh, sulfur dioxide out of airplanes into our stratosphere, uh, would be practical or even possible in the real world. So this is coming out of the, the uh, research led by scientists from the National Center for Atmospheric Research. 
the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory and Cornell University represent a significant step forward in the field of geoengineering. No shit, Still, there are many questions that need to be answered about sulfur dioxide injections into the planet's stratosphere, including how this type of engineering might alter regional precipitation patterns, the extent to which such injections would damage the ozone layer, and the possibility of a global engineering effort to combat warming also raises serious governance and ethical concerns. There you go. So this is NCAR scientist Jager Richter. This is a major milestone and offers promise of what might be possible in the future. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. Yes, past studies have typically sought to answer the question, what happens if we do engineering? And the results of those studies have described the outcomes of injecting a predetermined amount of sulfates into the atmosphere, often at the equator. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, so now they are asking the question, how might geoengineering be used to meet specific climate objectives? That really sounds like a different question to me. So then they, of course, what they talk about, what they're trying to do here is mimic a volcano. There you go. Uh, for this research, the team studied one much discussed approach injecting its sulfur dioxide into the upper atmosphere uh, using high flying airplane with with the help with the help of high flying aircraft. There you go. But while the injections would counter global warming, they would not address other problems associated with climate change. Mainly, it would do nothing to, at all towards ocean acidification and they would likely have their own negative side effects. There you go. Uh, good Lord, then they talk about the complex chemistry. The complex chemistry, this is a long involved uh, article. Uh, good Lord. Uh, and then of course what they are talking about is uh, in, in here a lot is, is what you hear the eco-Nazis talking about that and mentioned here that we do understand as a planet anybody supporting this unadulterated horse shit, which is chemtrails, let's be honest what we're talking about here, uh, <coughs> that once we <coughs> let this toothpaste out of the tube, there is no way to put it back. And once we start doing this, we have to do it pretty much every day for the rest of of human civilization. <clears throat> that if we ever stop, then, like in a matter of weeks, <clears throat> the temperature uh, will go up 10 degrees in a matter of weeks. Okay, let's get down to the bottom. <clears throat> this is NCR scientist Simone Tilms, author of the research, quote, 
we are still a long way from understanding all the interactions in the climate system that could be triggered by geoengineering, which means we don't understand the full range of possible side effects. But climate change also poses risks, which is it is our choice, frying pan or the fire. This is the predicament, well, not th this is one of the many predicaments that has no solution. A predicament is a problem with no solutions. Uh, it's, either way, we're fucked. With or without these goddamn chemtrails, we're fucked. And that's the bottom line. I, I really uh, love the nod to Alex Jones here. The research was funded by the National Science Foundation, NCA, our sponsor, and by the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency otherwise known as DARPA. It is DARPA. Uh, anybody who doesn't know where the, the, the black money coming for this research is coming from, it's coming out of DARPA. And I'm not going to get into, for those of you who do not know who DARPA is, I suggest you go over there to the Alex Jones channel to uh, find out who the hell DARPA is they are the ones bringing chemtrails to the sky near you in the near future. Okay, let's, I'm kind of ricocheting back and forth here. So let's go over here to those lefties at Democracy Now! What is Amy Goodman talking about uh, last, uh, this is last week, over there, those unadulterated horseshit uh, COP23 hearings, these UN climate change meetings over there in Bonn, Germany last week. Uh, Amy was over there interviewing climatologist Kevin Anderson, who is making the, uh, the ridiculous claim our socio-economic paradigm is incompatible with our climate change objectives. No shit, Sherlock. That is a long way of saying the Paris Climate Accord and these UN climate talks are a fucking joke. Okay, so Amy is uh, over. Amy over there in Bonn, Germany, talking to Kevin Anderson. Uh, let me just pull a few quotes. I'm, I'm not going to read. Uh, get all to Amy's questions. I'm just going to tease some of the quotes from Kevin Anderson. Who is Kevin Anderson again? Kevin Anderson's a good guy. I need to talk to him. Uh, Kevin Anderson is a professor in climate change leadership at the Center for Environment and Development Studies from Uppsala University. He is also the Chair of Energy and Climate Change at the Tyndall, Re Tyndall Center for Climate Change Research at the University of Manchester in Britain. And this is what, uh, Kevin was saying over there, those horseshit talks. <clears throat> Quote, If we are to deliver on our two degree Celsius climate change commitment, uh, 
than the EU's plans, the European Union's plans and policies for the development of a much larger natural gas network are completely incompatible with the EU's fair contribution to the Paris Agreement. So, all of the proposals and development we're seeing with new liquefied natural gas, otherwise known as LNG terminals, these proposals for new pipelines that are coming from Azerbaijan and other parts of the world, these are completely incompatible with Paris, with Paris and they are locking us in to, a, to an ongoing high carbon future. There you go. So he goes off on a rant. And, and this is just all he's looking at is, is liquid natural gas uh, projects inside the European Union. If you just look at that, just look at that, uh, it, it, it points out how completely incompatible. Uh, he just uses that as a springboard in the in the interview uh, just to say that, that, that throw this shit out the window. Uh, the principal part in terms of the temperature goals. In other words, we want to hold the global average temperature to a rise of no more than 2 degrees C for the pre-industrial period. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, <clears throat> Just so, so, so even there, even, even, even there, many parts of the world now have said that would be extremely dangerous, which is why the Paris Agreement also included at the behest of some of the poorer, more vulnerable parts of the world a one and a half degree goal. Who the fuck are they kidding? Uh, and so then he. He, he basically you know, goes through this, we've heard it a million times, these people who do not, cannot wrap their Alex Jones level of, of, of discernment and critical thinking around this, that this two degrees doesn't sound like anything. Well, <coughs> what is two degrees Celsius? Even, even on the ridiculous, even on the ridiculous apocalyptic hopium that this is going to ha happen. Okay, just to put it into perspective, Kevin, <clears throat> it is worth bearing in mind that throughout the whole of human period on this planet, uh, 200,000 to 300,000 years, we have only ever lived with about one degree of variation. We are now at a variation away from the norm that we have never seen as humans on this planet. And it is getting higher every single year. Uh, there you go. Uh, and so, Amy asked a question, so, what do you think actually needs to happen now? And his answer, the science is very clear on this. The Paris Climate Accord has these temperatures, I would call them obligations, not targets. They are duties or obligations. We have to achieve them, not try to achieve them. <clears throat> and the science is very clear that to deliver on that, we only have a certain amount of carbon dioxide that we can put into the atmosphere. But the problem is, when you 
getting down here, uh, the problem, quote, continuing quoting Kevin, <clears throat> you add up uh, all of the commitments that every country on this planet, with or without the United States, has made, and it is probably somewhere between three and four degrees Celsius of warming, which would be utterly devastating at a global level. So, we have this two degree C carbon cake, and if we are to really resolve that properly, we need to divide the cake up in a fair fa fashion, and at the moment, no country, no country is really trying to do that. And then, of course, they go from the EU over to the United States, and he goes off on his rant about Donald Trump taking down the planet. So let's go, I want to get back to the Pope. Do I talk about Donald Trump or the Pope? Well, before we go over to Donald Trump, what is on Pope Francis's mind at the UN Climate Talks? We've heard from, uh, from Kevin Anderson so Pope Francis, what was on his mind at, these, at this dog and pony show? Pope Francis blasts the, quote, perverse attitudes of climate change deniers. Pope Francis is once again proving he has absolutely zero patience for climate change deniers. So, According to, uh, oh, this is, he didn't actually go up there. I guess he sent a letter to the, uh, the Pope, writing a letter to the UN. There you go, where the planet is saved. We have the Pope joining forces with the United Nations to save the planet. And in his letter, uh, Pope, the Pope called climate change, quote, one of the most worrying phenomena our humanity is experiencing. Oh, shit, Sherlock. Yes. And, uh, what does he have to say about uh, climate change deniers specifically? Uh, they talk about it in the headline. And, okay, finally, getting out here, uh, Francis is a staunch advocate for action on the environment. Oh, come on now, that ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. Uh, in his 2015 encyclical, he made it clear that he believes humans, humans are partly to blame for the troubles the earth is facing. No shit, Sherlock. Okay, you tell them, Pope. They have this hilarious picture of the Pope handing Donald Trump his, uh, his manifesto on the collapse of a planet. There you go. Uh... <clears throat> judging by the Trump administrations to defend fossil fuels at the COP23 conference, there is a chance Donald Trump may not have gleaned much from his homework assignment from the Pope. No shit, so I already went over, uh, I already went over last week about how Trump's delegation to the uh, to the UN climate talks were uh, cheerleading fossil fuels, that we need more fossil fuels and more nuclear energy to save the planet. Morning, morning. <clears throat> so uh, I guess we have here 
a penetrating analysis. Who is this? Oh, from the French News Service. And I kind of like the French News Service. So, what, according to the penetrating analysis, Trump pullout from climate pact means even hotter world. Oh, uh, okay, guys. I, I'm not going to get in another broken record rant that uh, why this old eco-Nazi is cheering on Donald Trump for pulling out of the bullshit Paris Climate Agreement. Uh, so this is the French News Service looking at this uh, report by this outfit called the Climate Action Tracker. <clears throat> okay. Trump's pullout from the Paris Agreement will push up global temperatures by nearly half a degree Celsius or 0.9 degree Fahrenheit by 2100, according to this report released in Bonn by the Climate Action Tracker. Uh, if all countries if all countries, including the United States, honor their carbon cutting pledges, the world will see a 2.8 C of global warming above pre-industrial levels. But since Donald Trump pulled out, uh, if the U.S. abandons its goals, it abandons its goals for reducing its greenhouse gases, the end of the century thermometer will climb even further to 3.2 degrees Celsius, the report showed. Okay, I'm doing some math here. All right, let's do some math for the mainstream media. If I was an editor at the math... Uh, okay, well, that's 0.4 degrees Celsius. I guess, I guess 0.4 degrees. Uh, anyway, as long as we're... Uh, as long as we're going through this comedy routine... <clears throat> Okay, take it away, mainstream media. What else, what other little nuggets of wisdom has, uh, does this article share with us? The annual analysis of the world's top 32 carbon polluters, accounting for more than 80% of global emissions, showed that China and India have both accelerated their transition toward greener economies. China's emission growth has slowed dramatically. <clears throat> Beijing is on track to fulfill its Paris Pledge a peak in CO2 emissions by 2030, a full decade ahead of schedule. Uh, at the same time, at the same time, this report says that Beijing is on track to fulfill its pledge Cat rates China's efforts as, quote, highly insufficient. No shit, hmm. Wow, as global CO2 emissions will in fact rise 2% in 2017, dashing hopes that they had peaked due largely to a surge of coal, oil, and natural gas consumption in China. No shit, Sherlock. So, here one more time. 
India has also stepped up its climate action, the researchers said. Guys, I've, I've had about enough of this. So I think how they can make the statement that uh, Beijing is on track to fulfill its pledge, even if that was not unadulterated horseshit, what they're saying here is, is just a, the very same thing that Kevin Anderson was saying here, uh, even on the, the, uh, on the absolute unadulterated horseshit, uh, apocalyptic, uh, I mean, uh, 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 not apocalyptic, uh, apocaloptimistic uh, fantasy that they will meet their goddamn Paris goals even if they do. If every fucking country on this planet meets its goals, as Kevin Anderson uh, would say, we're fucked that, the, the, that these goals are a joke and it ain't going to happen. We're fucked. And uh, anyway, I think that's pretty much my climate change right now. No, I guess I got one more. I mentioned this uh, clueless uh, moron last week. This Kathleen Hartnett White. Five times that Trump's pick for top environmental advisor struggled to defend her climate denial. <clears throat> Kathleen Hartnett White stammered, sighed, and sat silent for seconds on end on Wednesday throughout her Senate hearing to be confirmed as the new head of the White House's Council on Environmental Quality, the, the Trump White House Council on Environmental Quality. There is a, uh, another uh, oxymoron for the, <clears throat> for the end times. Okay. Just a few of the, I'm just going to read one, one more paragraph of this because we want to end on a chuckle. The former Texas environmental state regulator, a Texas environmental regulator, turned climate pundit has argued in the past that, these are direct quotes, Carbon dioxide has none of the attributes of a pollutant. She has called carbon dioxide a harmless trace gas. She has called carbon dioxide plant food. And she has compared Pope Francis's public advocacy for action to curb global warming to the Catholic Church's arrest of Galileo for heresy. She equated the belief in the overwhelming evidence that man-made greenhouse gas emissions are warming the planet to paganism and has accused the United Nations leaders calling for climate change actions of advocating totalitarian communism and she is now Donald Trump's new environmental advisor. Anyway guys uh, I don't know where my we are so fuck sign has gotten to but uh, I think more than anyone is the geoengineering article uh, we're fucked or we're screwed. The frying pan of the fire, your choice. And with that, I've got to wrap up. I have to wrap up this week's climate change meltdown roundup rant because as a couple of you have already commented, it is time for me to take my little dog since I don't shop at Walmart, Sancho Panza and I, we're heading to Target.
heading to Target to buy his new Santa Claus uniform. So it's a little Santa Claus suit. So we can go sell Christmas trees to clueless fucking morons at the Austin Optimist Club. Uh, I will not be bringing my We Are So Fuck sign to the Austin Optimist Club Christmas tree lot. So, I got to go. Get out there and enjoy it while you still can. Yes? Bye, guys! Are you ready to go get dressed up like Santa Claus? No, sir.